Amidst the hijab row, prohibitory orders under Section 144 have been imposed around all high schools in Karnataka, Zuripit district. The order is going to come into effect from 14th February and remains in force till 19th. This means that all the gatherings and agitations are banned in the area around high schools in the district till Saturday. Section 144 was imposed after the superintendent of police made a request to Deputy Commissioner in Udupi, Karma Rao. He requested that prohibitory orders be enforced in 200 meter radius around high schools in the district. Chief Minister of Karnataka, Basavraj Bomai, said that government's top priority was to get normalcy back in schools. He also announced that schools will reopen from tomorrow, but colleges will remain shut. <laughs> Sala College Glana, Modli the City, Sawardatia, Bhavne, Shanti Tavagi, Makulu Jarjani and Madabuku. The high school Alla Parambad Mele, Adam Nasas Madi on the Verdi Puri Amel on Savay Mantir Manonu. Mustafa is now joining us live for the latest on this. Mustafa, tell us a little more about the prohibitory orders that are in place. Section 144 uh, announced in Karnataka over this, in Udipi, over the hijab row. This amidst the schools starting, uh, but colleges remaining shut. Yes, of course. Uh, we remember that since last week, because of the protests, schools and colleges were closed in Karnataka. And after that, an interim order of the Karnataka High Court had come in saying that students should go without wearing hijab or uh, saffron scarf inside the classrooms. After which, the Karnataka government started to open up schools and colleges in a phased-wise manner, which means that tomorrow, which is Monday, only high school is opening and uh, the colleges will remain shut. And until standard time, they are opening up the schools. And for that also, for example, in Europe, where we are present right now, a lot of protests had taken place and hence they have applied section 144 around uh, the 200 meters area, periphery, peripheral area of the schools and colleges so that no protest or gathering can take place or any other law and order situation could take place. After, if these things go smoothly, then the Karnataka government is planning to open up colleges on February 16. Meanwhile, we'll see that Karnataka High Court will decide on the matter and Monday, which is tomorrow, a hearing is pending. So till that time, the government wants to restrain normalcy and hence they have put in section 144 so that no law and order situation takes place. Back to you. Thanks for joining us for those details right there. While several parts of the nation simmer in hijab heat, Haryana Home Minister's pastor deplorable remark on the controversy, raking a partition row. Haryana minister compared those wearing hijabs with terrorists. Making a scathing attack against the Congress, he blamed the Congress for division of the country. He said that because of the divisive seats sown by the Congress, our country doesn't leave in, live in peace today. Meanwhile, addressing a rally, Asaduddin Oasi stoked a fresh controversy, saying hijab-wearing girls will excel in every field and will become doctors, she CMs, collectors, and one day, <coughs> even the Prime Minister of India. Reacting to this, BJP spokesperson Rakesh Tripathi said that Oasi's statement showcases his regressive thinking and that Muslim women of India won't fall for his words. <laughs> अपने आप को कहते हैं ये सेकुलर है, लेकिन धर्म के आधार पर, हिंदू मुसलमान के आधार पर देश का बटवारा कराया, और वो बटवारा कराया हुआ आज तक हिंदुस्तान को चैन से रहने नहीं दे रहा, वो कभी किसी शक्ल में, कभी किसी शक्ल में, कभी आतंकवादियों की शक्ल में, कभी हिजाब की शक्ल में, कभी किसी और शक्ल में वो सामने आते हैं, बीज कांग्रेस का बोया हुआ है जो विभाजनकारी बीच बोया हुआ है और हम अपनी बेटियों को इंशाल्लाह हो ताला अगर वो ये फैसला करती है कि अब्बा अम्मी मैं हिजाब पहनूंगी तो अब्बा अम्मी पहने बोलेंगे बेटा पहन तुझे कौन रखता है देखेंगे इंशाल्लाह हिजाब निकाह पहनेंगे कॉलेज को जाएंगे डॉक्टर भी बनेंगे कलेक्टर भी बनेंगे एसडीएम भी बनेंगे बिजनेसमैन भी बनेंगे और एक दिन याद रखना तुम कांड की जनता शायद मैं जिंदा नहीं रहूंगा तुम देखना एक दिन इस देश की प्रधानमंत्री एक बच्ची हिजाब पहन के प्रधानमंत्री बने असदुद्दीन ओवैसी का ये मुगालता मुगालता ही रहेगा वो जहां एक तरफ मुस्लिम महिलाओं को लगातार पर्दे में रखना चाहते हैं ये उनकी दकियानुसी संकीर्ण और कट्टरपंथी सोच है 
लेकिन अब मुस्लिम लड़कियां और महिलाएं आगे बढ़ रही हैं स्वावलंबी हो रही हैं नरेंद्र मोदी की सरकार ने आज तीन तलाक से उन्मूलन देने का काम किया है हज पर बिना महरम के जाने की छूट देने का काम किया है इसलिए अब असदुद्दीन ओवैसी की इन बातों में अब मुस्लिम महिलाएं फंसने वाली नहीं है ये कितने भी कट्टरपंथी मौलानाओं के कठमुल्लों के दबाव में इस तरह की बयानबाजी करके लोगों को भड़काने की कोशिश करते रहे लेकिन अब इस तरह का कोई ध्रुवीकरण मजहबी आधार पर नहीं होगा अब देश विकास के मुद्दे पर बात करेगा और विकास के मुद्दे पर ही चुनाव लड़े जाएंगे हिजाब पर आज देश में असदुद्दीन वैसी नफरत की राजनीति कर रहे हैं उनके लगातार जो बयान आ रहे हैं उसे साफ साबित होता है कि बच्चों को अलगाववाद पर उस रहे अपनी राजनीतिक रोटियां सेकने के लिए सदुद्दीन वैसी नफरत की राजनीति कर रहे हैं यह हसरत उनकी पूरी होने वाली नहीं है देश में यह अखंड भारत है अब उनकी वो हसरत पूरी नहीं होगी जो उनके पूर्वजों ने कभी किया था खंड खंड भारत करके अब वो हसरत पूरी होने वाली नहीं है यहाँ नफरत की राजनीति नहीं चलेगी भारतीय जनता पार्टी और उसके अनुसांगिक संगठन और ओएसी ये दोनों इस समय देश में एक सांप्रदायिक रंग देना चाहते हैं ऐसे मौके में जब उत्तर प्रदेश का चुनाव है और देश और उत्तर प्रदेश की जनता अमन और चैन चाहती है तब अवश्य दिन ओएसी का इस तरीके का बयान निश्चित रूप से प्रदेश का माहौल खराब करने की कोशिश करेगा और एक सांप्रदायिक ताकतों को ताकत देने का काम करेगा भारत की जनता किसी भी सांप्रदायिक व्यक्ति को और दूसरे दल को सपोर्ट करने वाले व्यक्ति की बात को भी समझती है चालाकिया भी समझती है और साजिशें भी समझती है ओवैसी साहब आप भारतीय जनता पार्टी के पिछलग्गू हो गए हैं इसलिए आप चुनाव को सांप्रदायिक बनाना चाहते हैं हिंदू मुसलमान कराना चाहते हैं हिजाब के नाम पर नहीं होगा असलियत के मुद्दों पर चुनाव होगा मुद्दे बेरोजगारी है महिलाओं का अपमान है किसानों का अपमान है किसानों को थार की मार से मारा गया है द पाकिस्तान आई एस आई खालिस्तानी टेरन एक्सेस इज ट्राइंग टू स्टोक हिजाब फायर इन इंडिया इंडिया टूडे इज एक्सेस द एक्सक्लूसिव इंटेल नोट वार्निंग लोकल पुलिस फोर्सेज एंड लॉ एनफोर्समेंट एजेंसीज ऑफ हिजाब रेफरेंडम बिंग पुश्ड बाई दी आई एस आई थ्रू टेरो ग्रुप सिख फॉर जस्टिस इंडिया टूडे फाउंड आउट ऑल्सो दैट द फादर ऑफ द पिटिशनर मुस्कान खान हु फेस्ट ऑफ सैफ्रन शॉल प्रोटेस्टर्स इज अ पी एफ आई डिस्ट्रिक्ट लीडर आर नेक्स्ट रिपोर्ट टेल्स यू मॉ protests counter protests celebrity voices global face offs rajyada bere bere makkala tande taigalu kuda kelu matiya sanghatnegalalli iddare anuvantaddu allegations of islamist links and now a pakistani isi khalistani terror nexus stoking the hijab fire in india India Today accessed an exclusive Intel note warning local police forces and law enforcement agencies of ISI Khalistani group backed hijab referendum. The warning group says terror group Sikh for Justice is pushing up to a so-called Urduistan in the areas of Rajasthan, Delhi, UP, Bihar and West Bengal where Muslim dominated areas will be free to practice their religious beliefs. Amid the snowballing tensions, another big twist surfaced in the controversy. Karnataka Home Minister Araga Janendra accused Islamist Campus Front of India of instigating the pro-hijab protests. Maithi ide Mandya da udgi matra la, Rajya da bere bere makkala thande taigalu kuda, kelu matiya sangatne galali idare anuvanta do, arivin li ide. The minister said. The Popular Front of India asked parents to take on UDP College and even send lawyers to represent the parents. <laughs> India today found out that father of petitioner Muskan Khan, who chanted Allahu Akbar, is a PFI district leader. Another petitioner, Alia Asadi's cousin, Nazat Asadi Belapu, is also a member of the radical Islamist outfit. PFI, the SDPI, all of that is backing you. They say. Yeah, they are backing because we are we approach them because we approach our parents approach them to for a help when they put us outside the class and not allowing us to enter the class and uh, our parents were already done uh, begging them to allow us to go to the inside the class at that time they approach CFI for the help. 
The matter quickly led to standoff between the families of six Muslim students and the college management. Intel suggests that agencies like ISI and Sikh for Justice are provoking Muslims in India on issues like hijab. The BJP in Karnataka has said that Campus Front of India and PFI were involved in the hijab protests. The big question is whether these hijab protests which have made international headlines were spontaneous or planned. BJP MLA Raghupati Bhatt alleged that his life was under threat over the controversy. The MLA claimed that he was receiving calls over the internet from different countries. The callers had reportedly told him that they know how to control him and threatened to harm him if he continued to oppose Muslims. That is not, not from any particular association or any person. This is all uh, dummy calls from the internet calls. But I don't. I didn't take it very serious. As a MLS, we'll receive a lot of like this uh, uh, calls. BJP minority cell chief Daud Abu Bakr also said that he received threats for speaking against the pro hijab protesters. Several questions are raised as the hijab showdown gets murkier. Is this an attempt by terrorist groups to divide our nation? Bureau report, India today. As the hijab row simmers across states, a Srinagar student who topped class 12 was mercilessly trolled on social media. Arusa backed the first position in science stream in class 12 board examinations, fell prey to trolling on social media for not wearing a hijab. Social media trolls asked Arusa to take lessons from Karnataka schoolgirl who chanted Allahu Akbar and told her to become a role model for girls in Kashmir. Arusa, with firm belief, replied to the troll saying she follows Islamic principles and does not need to wear hijab to prove herself as a good Muslim. Arusa, who freely interacted with media earlier tonight, speaking on camera after the toxic trolling on social media. Arusa scored 499 out of 500 in science of uh, class 12 board examinations and was felicitated by Deputy Commissioner of Srinagar. She was presented a certificate of excellence, a trophy and a 10,000 rupee check. बहुत ज़्यादा happy, बहुत happy हूँ मैं, overwhelmed हूँ बहुत ज़्यादा. Expected नहीं था इतना 495 से अब वो expected था, but 499, it's really amazing. एक मैंने खुद result नहीं देखा, because site crash हो गई थी कुछ, तो मुझे sir ने call किया, sir called me and said, तुम्हें first position है 499. We all started crying like, oh my god.